I love this story of David. I'm going to give you four little simple points to turn in survival into a thriving situation. Taking that that was bad, turning it to good. Are you all ready to receive? I want you to grab it, get a hold of it, get it in your heart. God's about to turn your world upside down. Hallelujah. But this story, 1 Samuel 30, David was off to battle. Him and his men, he came back to Ziglag. When he came back to Ziglag, topped the hill, looked in the valley to where Ziglag was. Smoke was rising. They ran on down to Ziglag. All of their goods had been taken. Somebody say all their stuff was gone. Their family was taken. Somebody say their family was gone. The Bible said it got so bad till his own soldiers was going to turn on him. Somebody say, that's a bad day. Come on, say it. That's a bad day. When your best friends that you've been in the foxhole with want to turn on you. That's a bad day. And the Bible said it was so bad they thought about killing King David. Because David had already been anointed to be king. He wasn't on the throne yet, but he was still prophetically destined to sit on the throne. I got a word for somebody. God's about to take you where you were born to go. I said God is about to open the big door and take you where you were created by God to go to. Somebody shout, I'm ready. Are you really? I'm ready. Whatever it takes, I'm ready. So no matter where you're at today, change is coming. Somebody say change is coming. Say it again. Change is coming. I know it's my time. I want you to say that with authority. I know it's my time. You've looked at people, you've seen them prosper, you've seen them bless, you've seen God do good things for them, and somehow it seemed it would never come. I got a word for you. It's your time. It's your time. You got to make up your mind right now. It's your time. Now, in that situation, look with me, please, at verse number six. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Somebody say emotionally upset. Every man for his sons and his daughters, but David. Somebody say, but David. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Now, I want to ask you a question. Y'all are wonderful, great, smart people. How many would be real honest and say, sometimes living between the prophecy and the manifestation is a tough place? living between is a tough place. Somebody say transitioning. I see by the Spirit many of you are in transition. God's taken you to another place in the kingdom of God. He's moving you from just barely surviving, from a place where there's more days in the month than there is money. No, y'all don't hear me. God said he's going to draw a line in the sand around you. While they suffer, he's going to bless you. Somebody say, I'm about to be blessed. See, when we're singing that I am a child of God, my mind went back to creation. When God created Adam and Eve, Genesis 1, 26, 27, the Bible said God looked at them and he blessed them. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Come on, say it with authority. I am blessed. I am blessed. There's not one stinking thing the devil can do about your blessing. 
God blessed you. Say it again. I'm blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, you're sitting by a blessed person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of you need a mind change. Some of you need a mind change. Because you've been grinding and you've been under the gun and hell's been screaming at you. But I got a word, change is coming. I said change is coming. I'm not going to be long. You better get it fast today. I said change is coming. God's about to turn your world around. He's about to make a change in your life. Not something you're going to sweat it out. God's going to put his hand on you. The Bible said God commanded his blessing on Adam and Eve. Watch this closely. Somebody say the commanded blessing. The commanded blessing. David had the commanded blessing on him, but he met a problem. See, just because you're blessed doesn't mean you're not going to have some warfare. Come on, talk to me, somebody. God put his hand on David, called him as a young man to be a king, but he faced some setbacks. Anybody beside me ever had a setback? Glory to God, the devil is a liar. Setbacks are about to become a setup for God to give you what you've never had. Wish I knew who I was talking to. I'd just come and get you. Your worst days are behind you. If you will receive what God's saying today, you can pucker up and kiss your worst days goodbye. Somebody say they're gone. When you leave this house, you leave this service, you step into another level by applying four sensible, very sensible, simple principles I'm about to give you. It's going to change your world. I mean, he's ready. Watch this. See, you got to understand, God said, I'm going to bless you, Adam and Eve. And then he said, I command you. How many knows God won't command you to do and be what you can't do? Hello, somebody. He said, I command you to be fruitful. Somebody say increase. That's what fruitfulness means. A harvest is about to come to your life. Somebody say, I'm looking for my harvest. Somebody say, I'm in a receiving mood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody gave me something the other day. I said, oh, brother, I'm in a receiving mood. Hello, somebody. That that wasn't easy for me. I had to get there because I was always wanting to give, give, give. But God said, if you give, 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 you got to receive, receive, receive. Somebody say, I'm in a receiving mood. I'm ready for your mailbox to be filled up with money, not bills. Well, maybe that's just for me. I said, I'm ready for my mailbox to be filled up with money, not bills. Glory to God. I got about five of you on board. I'll say it the third time. That's resurrection. I'm ready for you to receive money, not bills. Can somebody be a receiver? Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to understand you are going to be fruitful You're going to multiply. Somebody say increase. Fruitful, multiply. You're going to take dominion. Now watch this carefully. Your enemies are about to be at peace with you because you're going to step into a position of dominion. Somebody say dominion's mine. God was teaching David it's not by his might, it's by God's power. I mean, things look bad. His kids are gone. His wife is gone. His family's gone. Everybody's gone. His goods are taken. But God said, it's not over until I say it's over. I want to tell somebody, what happened bad is about to turn to good, and you're going to give God a shout in the midst of it. You know what hell hates is your praise. Somebody here needs to reach back and get your praise and say, I lost my praise, but I take it back. He is an awesome God. He is a mighty God. He is the most high God. He is the creator God. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is El Shaddai, my God. 
He is the God that's bigger than everything I'm facing. Jesus. Somebody say, I'm getting it back. I'm getting it back. See, what David did not realize, he was three days from double, sitting, crying, shaking, upset, down in the mouth. And God said, David, you're just three days from double. Because you're going to pursue the enemy. You're going to get your family back. You're going to get your stuff back. But you're also going to get their stuff. Now, if somebody listening right now really believed in three days, you was going to get double, that'd be a shout coming up out of this house. A shout coming up out of this house. A shout coming up out of this house. A praise coming up out of this house. I got they praise at a football game more than you're praising. There ought to be a shout and a dance and a praise coming up out of your belly. Three days, double. Glory to God, glory to God. Ah, Jesus. Be seated. And he said, not only David, three days you're going to get double. Isaiah 61, 7 said he's going to give you double for your trouble. Somebody say, I'm going to get double for my trouble. Isaiah 61, 7 said you're going to get double for your trouble. Somebody say, I'm going to get it. Nobody's going to stop me. Watch this. Watch this. But in six days... By next Saturday, six days, he said, you'll be sitting in the prophetic center of my plans. Oh, I feel Holy Ghost bumps on me. In six days, you'll be sitting on the throne that was prophesied you were anointed for in six days. At that minute, it looked like hell. His houses burned, his stuff taken, his family gone. But God said, don't take your eyes off where you're going. Hello, somebody. Don't take your eyes off of where you're prophetically determined to be. Somebody say, I'm going somewhere that God said I could go that I've never been before. And it sure does look good. I don't think you believe what you said. (laughs) On your notes, number one, the first principle, an enemy arising is an announcement. Somebody say it's an announcement. Say it, it's an announcement of blessings. The devil does not attack a woman who is hopeless pushing a grocery basket. Not one thief's going to bother her. She can push it right down to the drug center, right where they're taking drugs and killing and murdering. Nobody will ever touch that homeless woman. Thieves don't attack that that has no value. Now, if she was pushing gold bars, a basket full of them, they'd be, they'd be going after that homeless woman. Hello, somebody. Neither does the enemy attack you unless you are valuable. See, some of you have been going, Lord, I don't know why in the world I'm going through what I'm going through. Well, let me tell you why. Because God has deposited a treasure down deep in your heart and you shall become everything God said that you're going to become. You've been through this. You've been through that. You've got the scars all over you that testify the grace of God that kept you. My God, I should have been dead. But God said, no, I'm going to bless you in your latter days greater than you. I wish I had some help in this house. God said it's your time. So your trouble is an announcement 
God's about to bless you. My God, that ought to be enough to make you shout. What you've been attacked with over the last few weeks and months is a, an announcement, a testimony. God's got something big for you. See, the devil knew David was three days from double. He also knew he was six days from the throne. Can I just whisper to somebody? The devil knows you're three days, 72 hours. 72 hours, Pastor Johnny, 72 hours from recovery of everything that's been lost. I'll just prophesy it to me. You're three days, 72 hours from everything that you've had. Uh, God Almighty, I can't help myself today. I feel it down to my toenails. God's about to turn it for your good. What was meant for evil is turning. The battle is an announcement. If it had not have been for Goliath, David would have been a shepherd the rest of his life. But because he had been a shepherd that learned to praise and worship God out alone. Oh, Jesus, i got to hurry. What you've, what you've been doing alone that nobody sees is about to be put on public display. <laughs> your praise, your worship, your prayer is about to be answered and God's going to set you as a public example of His blessing. Somebody shout, I'm ready. I can tell you, I can tell you, I can testify, I can tell you. D and I are examples that God can take you from heavy indebtedness, 600 plus thousand dollars, to debt free, Without a sweat. I wished I had somebody that was ready to get your house paid for, your car paid for, your credit cards paid for, your bank accounts full and overflowing. Is there anybody ready to step into what God has for you? Give him a praise one more time. God, I feel like I'm prophesying to somebody. I'm telling you, change is about to happen so quick it's going to make your head spin. I said it's going to make your head spin. The day is coming now, saith the Lord, that Amos, the word of God in Amos 9, 13 shall come to pass, that you will plant and reap in the same day. You'll give to God and get a harvest in the same day. See, some of you saying, I don't know. I've struggled and struggled and struggled. What's well, time you get a thought change? God's about to change your world. I said, God's about to change your world. All you need is an extra dose of favor and the doors will fly open. Your debt will be removed. And God will bring your family into the king. Somebody receive that in the name of Jesus. God Almighty. Number two. Number two. Second principle. To move from surviving to thriving. Learn to live beyond your feelings and emotions. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to hit it real quick. Grab it. Watch this. Watch this. You've got to learn. Somebody say you've got to learn. See, the Bible says God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Isaiah 55 said God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. So listen to me carefully. Say every day, 70,000 thoughts come into my mind. Scientists say 
every day. 70,000 thoughts come into your mind. Somebody say 70,000. That's a bunch. Even for my country mind, that's a bunch. I said, that's a bunch. And can I tell you, too many times, most of them are bad thoughts. So you have a responsibility. Hear me? The Bible said you take captive every thought and bring it unto the obedience of the Lord. Now what does that mean in good old Georgia terminology? That means that you say when the devil said you're sick, you say, I'm healthy. When the devil says, you are poor. Say, what's poor? Poor means you can't afford the last OR. It's just poor. Poor. The devil will say to you, you poor. And you say back, what the elder just said, I am rich. You want to know how you take captive to bad thoughts? You put good thoughts in its place that align to the Word of God. Are you listening to me? When the devil said that the people you work with are going to destroy you, you say, oh no, they're going to be at peace with me. Come on, somebody. Matter of fact, Tell the devil when he says that, no, the Lord is preparing a table of abundance in the presence of my enemies. Psalm 23. God is preparing a table of abundance in the presence of my enemies. Glory to God. You have to control. David was having a breakdown. I read it to you. I mean, he's having a breakdown. He was shaking, trembling. They was threatening to kill him. Everything was bad. But then God said he got a hold of his emotions. The Bible said he encouraged himself. He didn't have to have Dr. Barker come and prophesy. He encouraged himself. He didn't have to call me on the phone and me pray for him. He encouraged. He didn't have to call the elders and say, pray, 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 my world's falling apart. They encourage themselves who climb to the peak of God. Somebody needs to say, I am a conqueror, more than a conqueror, through Jesus. Say it out of your mouth. Say it, everybody. I'm blessed because what Jesus did. Galatians 3.13 said he hung on the cross and died, not just to forgive my sins, but that the blessing of Abraham might come on me also. God showed me something about Abraham, and, and, and i got to give it to you quickly. In Genesis 13, God showed me some when their crops had multiplied and their, their cattle had multiplied, lots and his and his nephew Lot and his, there was no more room to even hold the blessing. And Abraham said, Lot, we're going to have to separate because of the blessing has been so big. See, some of y'all are going to have to get another bank account because your one bank account ain't going to hold what you're about to get blessed with. Got three believers. I wish I'd get some more. Say, I'm about to be blessed more than ever in my life. I was reading that this week, Genesis 13. God said, you know why that Abraham was so blessed? He said, number one, he was so generous. He was a man of generosity. Listen to his words. Lot, now Abe's the old man. Lot, the young man. Lot, choose which you want. The well-watered plains of Jordan where there's water, there's lush grass for your flocks, or do you want the desert and the mountains? 
Because whatever you choose, I'm going the other way. Yes. How many members what Lot said? Lot said, I want that well watered plain. Yes. I want that beautiful water. Yes. I need that. Yes. Now, he was the youngster. He should have went to the mountains. Hello, somebody. But he said, no, I'm not generous. I'm not a giver. I'm matter of fact, I'm looking at that green grass and water. That's my resource. Elijah looked at him, said, go ahead. I'm looking at my source. See, the problem, some of you can only see your job as a resource. Abraham said, God told me he would be El Shaddai. So that means God's going to take the desert place, and before I get there, be green grass. He's going to take dry places. Before I get there, he'll put water there. Because God is my source. Somebody say it out loud. God's my source. Say it again. God's my source. Number three. Refuse to get stuck in a moment. Oh, Jesus. David could have stayed right there, stuck, weeping, upset, surviving. But God said, encourage yourself. Get your praise on. Get unstuck from where you are. Can I just tell somebody, just the fact you got up and came to church today, makes marks with him. He sees it as a pursuit of him. The very fact you came here and worshiped, the very fact you're writing down notes, the very fact you're listening by the Spirit, you're tuned in online, that says to God, they're hungry. And those that do hunger and thirst after me shall be satisfied. Somebody say, I'm about to be satisfied. Come on now, I'm about to be satisfied. You got to make up your mind. You're not staying where you are now. Somebody say, mediocrity is not where I belong. See, God said He made you as a treasure. See, God's going to use, now listen to me, now I got to hurry. God's going to use just natural, everyday folks in these last days that's going to give Him honor. Because he's going to put the supernatural on your natural. And when you walk up to do something, the supernatural is going to give you wisdom to do things so far beyond the natural till promotion will come running after you. I want to say something to you. Quit chasing money. Get in alignment with God. Money will chase you. One lunch, when me and her owed over $600,000, one lunch, one lunch with a key man in Metro Atlanta, one lunch, he called, wanted to take us to lunch, sat across the table and said to us, I want that commercial property. You own that commercial property, I want it. I said to that fine gentleman who happened to be a Christian, I said to him, well, how much are you going to give me for it? Because it ain't for sale. And he said, well, I think you're blessed of God. I said, well, I know I'm blessed of God. He said, well, I'm going to take three bids. I'm going to have that property zoned as commercial. See, what you don't understand, people who love you and want to favor you will do things you can't even do. I didn't zone it as commercial. It was residential. He said, I'm going to zone it as commercial, and I'm going to take what's on that property, zone it as commercial, so all of it be zoned commercial, and then I'm going to take three bids, three appraisals, and I'm going to give you the highest one. Now, that's not the way in the natural. Most people get three bids, get the cheapest one, try to Jew you down 100000 from there. Hello, somebody. See, what you don't, you're looking at me and saying, well, you, you lucky. No, I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. I wear the blessing. I said, I wear the blessing. Joseph was blessed when he was in the pit. 
Joseph was blessed when he was in Potiphar's house. He was even blessed when he was in prison over something he never done. All of it was God's design to get him to the palace. Somebody's got to understand, everything you've been through was a plan by God to get you where you can't get by yourself. Somebody say, I'm going somewhere ordered by God and nobody can stop me now. Come on, say, nobody can stop me now. Say it like this, I'm unstoppable. When you look at Joseph, he was unstoppable. And every time it said God made him to prosper. God made him to prosper. Not because he sweated, God made him to prosper. Somebody say, I'm blessed, so God makes me to prosper. People just want to do me good. They just want to do me good. She walks in shopping. Y'all know she's a shopping queen. She has, she has a doctor's degree. That's why we call her Dr. D in shopping. She can walk in. And the price tag be glaring this big right in front of her. And she'll say, well, I wonder how much that is. See, she don't believe the price tag. When I married her, and people know me know this truth. When I married her, I walked in the store, found the shoes, put them on, said, that's fine, let's go. Since I married her, I walk in, find the shoes, and she said, now you go on and mess around, and I'll get them for you. Because they'll ask me this amount of money. When she gets through with the blessing on her, it'll be about one-third debt. Yes, we'll get in the car going home. I said, how much do you get them for? She said, you don't want to know. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. See, you got to begin to realize there's somebody waiting to bless you. Amen. Somebody is waiting to help you. Somebody is waiting to give to you. Some. Somebody is waiting to do you good. Hallelujah. Somebody shout it. Somebody's going to do me good. Last, number four, and I'm through. Release the past. Let it go. Release the past. Let it go. Somebody say, I got to let it go. Here's a, here's a God word. And I'll be out of your way in two minutes. There comes a point in your life where if you don't deal with bitterness, unforgiveness, rejection, wounds of your past, it will rob you. It will rob you. Joseph in the palace who had the food to help his brothers from starvation and his daddy could have had unforgiveness, bitterness, For all that his brothers done to him that sold him as a slave into Egypt, but he didn't. He looked at them and ran out into a private room and wept because they did not recognize him. God says if you release it, people will not recognize you. God's going to bless you to the point that they won't even recognize you. You said, but Coy, I've been done so wrong. Me too. I've been hurt so bad. Me too. But I had to make a decision. Somebody say a decision. To let it go. I just let it go. I said, I'm not taking it any longer. I'm through with it. You know what happens? When you release it, God fights for you. When you let it go, God will fight your battles. As long as you're holding on to it, you're going to have to fight your battles. The minute you make a decision, I forgive them. I release them from that hurt and that pain in my life. I tell you this story and I'm through. I'm out of your way. God's saying he's wanting to take you from just making it to thriving. My stepdad, my dad died when I was 14. My mother remarried a church man. Somebody say a church man. 
I didn't say a Christian man. A church man. He went to church looking for a woman. Attached himself to my mother. She asked me, should she marry Oscar? I said, no. She said, well, I think I'm going to. I said, well, it's a bad decision. She said, oh, you're just missing your daddy. I said, yeah, I am. But he ain't, he ain't my daddy. And she said, well, I'm going to marry him. I said, well, go ahead. I'll, that's fine. But I said, he's not the man for you. She married him. I was living in the house. My brother, four years younger than me, living in the house with Oscar. He pulled a gun, cocked it, stuck it like this right at me, and said, I'm going to blow your head off. I said, what have I ever done to you? He said, I just don't like you. I said, oh, okay. He said, won't you move out and get out of my house? I said, I'll do it today. I didn't know where I was moving. He wanted me out. I'm gone. I moved out, my mother weeping. I said, don't weep. It's all in his plan. But let me tell you something. Hatred, unforgiveness, Bitterness come creeping into my heart. How could that man, my stepdaddy, married to my mama, I never done him no bad. How could he do that? How could he look at me and say, I hate you? I never did nothing to him. I left. I moved to Texas. I got to Texas. I got hungry for God. When I started seeking God, you know what God said to me? You got to let it go. I tried to play real dumb. What do you mean, let it go? He said, you know what I mean? That unforgiveness, that bitterness in your heart against Oscar. My mother was in heaven. Oscar was still living. I left Texas, went back to Oklahoma, knocked on his door about half scared, drove there, knocked on his door for one reason, to say, Oscar, Will you please forgive me? Now that seems real easy to y'all. I hadn't done nothing. Come on now. Come on. Except let that junk come inside me. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about how to move to thriving. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. He answered the door. When he saw me, he became scared. I said to Oscar, I'm not here for any reason. I don't even have to come in. He said, oh, come on in. I hadn't seen him in a long time. I walked into his house where he had cocked the gun at me. I walked into his house. He said, what, what can I do for you, Coy? I said, I come to ask you to forgive me of what happened in my heart when you cocked that gun on me because I want to be right with God. And God said, I have to let it go. Are you listening to me? Tears begin to run down his face, dripping off his chin. And he said, Coy, I need to be saved. He said, I don't think I'm going to live much longer. I'm not a Christian. Would you lead me to Jesus? Are you listening to me? Somebody's future is dependent upon you being willing to forgive those who hurt you. Somebody say, I'm going to let it go. Come on, say, I'm going to let it go. I'm turning it loose today. It's an act of faith. It's a decision we make. I didn't feel it. I drove three and a half hours to ask a man to forgive me, and I never did anything. I didn't feel it all the way there saying, God, I don't understand this. God, I don't understand this. And all the time, God's saying, it's for him. It's not for you. When you let it go, I'll show my power. I led Oscar to Jesus. He wept his way through to God. He released everything inside of him. Told me some stories I didn't know about how he was full of anger and hurt, unforgiveness and bitterness in his heart. When he told me that stuff, I knew then why he shot, took the gun and cocked it to shoot me because of his own problems. Somebody's here today, many, many somebodies, you're about to let it go. 
God's going to give you the grace. He's going to give you the ability. And you're going to let it go today. You've been done wrong. You have not been wrong. But you've been done wrong. And this is a day where God's going to let you be free from the pain. Would you stand all over the room?